we bought a car. We just purchased a new to us car and I'll tell you all about it in this video, <laughs> the trials and tribulations of purchasing a new to us car. So if you've been following the saga, we had a brand new 2022 RAV4 Hybrid XSE, which is a top trim level with a panoramic moonroof, uh, silver in with blackout hubcaps. It was beautiful. It was exactly what we wanted as far as cars go. We had that car for just about a year when it was stolen on a road trip to Montreal to visit friends. So traumatic event. Thank God no, no one was in the car and everyone was fine, but it was super inconvenient, especially with the baby and with especially having to travel to get to childcare. So we'd been renting a car for the past three months, but we finally purchased a car just at the end of last month. So that's the background why we were looking for a different car for a car. So to kind of give you an idea of my history, I have owned in my lifetime eight cars and seven of those cars have been pre-owned. So I'm used to buying pre-owned cars. I'm, I'm familiar with the process. I bought one car brand new that was a 2004 Honda Civic from a dealership right after graduating college. Mixed feelings on whether or not I would do that again or recommend someone to do that again. But to say I've owned, with having purchased seven cars pre-owned, I'm again familiar with the process. My husband has only owned two cars in his lifetime. They have both been Toyota 4Runners. <laughs> he just, that's his car. That's his jam. So he had, not, and they've both been purchased from a dealership. So kind of putting those, our two experiences together, we were debating about where to go next. I was still on that side of wanting to buy something in cash, pre-owned, a good solid pre-owned used car that we could drive for a while and give us some time, some breathing room to make some headway on our financial goals in this year and beyond. Because past a certain point, like our child is not going to care what she's riding around in and I don't care what, what we're riding around in. Past a certain point, it's, we're not car people that, we're not really car people. You put the key in, you turn it on and it goes and that, that's the most that I need to know about a car. So he heard me out. He liked having a brand new car and I can't fault that because it was great having a brand new car. It was beautiful to have exactly the car that you want with exactly, I mean, knowing that you were the very first person to drive it. I love that too. That said, having a car stolen, the exact car you want stolen was a wake up call for me at least I, I, because he handled all the payment details. Um, I know it was at least $1,000 a month in payments. And for me, a car is a liability. That car is going down in value. It is an expense that you have to pay out. A useful expense, necessary expense in our case because we travel to childcare. So my thought was let's just buy pre-owned or let's buy a uh, private party pre-owned, please. So he very generously heard me out and heard, heard out my sort of thoughts because we both have the same end goal in mind and that's financial independence. The question is just how do we get there? And it's crucial, critical that we both are on the same page and that we both get there together. So after some kind of discussions, he was on board with looking at pre-owned cars. So we started looking at a dealership to see what we could get for certified pre-owned. This time a year ago. So let's talk about the current car market. That it's a little bit different than it was this time a year ago. This time a year ago, you couldn't find a car for sticker price. They were all selling for above sticker price, which I've never seen in my life. After seven, buying seven cars, I've never seen a car sell for above dealership price because the, the inventory was so low. The markup was, they were able to mark up the sticker price. So when we bought the car, I think we paid just maybe two or 300 above um, MSRP. So at the time, that was a great deal. So fast forward to this time this year, and, and you couldn't find anything pre-owned either. The private party used was market was ridiculous, which is why we ended up with a new car is because we couldn't really find anything at the time pre-owned that um, was that fit our parameters of wanting something safe and rely, uh, fairly reliable uh, that fit within our uh, and not having to go to the repair shop every five minutes with, a, with an in, at the time an infant. So that was the state of the car market a year ago. This year, when we looked, we saw a couple more deals that, that there were, it was a little bit better um, landscape for purchasing pre-owned. So we started looking at dealerships for, for reasonable pre-owned cars. And then we were talking and because my husband had never bought a car from a private party. And he was like, well, you know, and I, I just said, in my mind, you get a better deal when you buy from a private party. He's like, oh yeah, you're right. You, you do, you, you do. And I'm like, okay. So that was kind of like a tacit approval just for me to start looking. So I started looking. Here's what we went through to get the car. I started looking for a car on December 7th. That's the timeline, December 7th. 
because we've been renting at that point in a rental car for three months and it was starting to add up. It was about $1,000 a month to rent a car. December 7th, I started reaching out to car to cars, people with cars on uh, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. By December 26th, we completed the sale on the car that we ultimately ended up buying. It was a rocky ride. So in my experience, I had mostly bought cars from Craigslist. The very first car that I ever bought, I bought from classifieds2000.com. <laughs> that kind of is dating me, but that's when I bought my very first car. And I heard about that website from a friend at, in high school when I was in high school. So that was uh, my first stop was Craigslist after it took a while to get some responses. And someone on this channel, actually uh, Chasing the Sun, had left a comment that she had bought a car from Facebook Marketplace. I'm like, let me check that out. So that's where I went next. And I kept a spreadsheet with the outreach that I did to people with cars. So in the spreadsheet, I had date, year, make, model, miles, asking price and location, and then color. Because what we were really looking for was a car with low miles and a moonroof. And that's exactly what we got. At the time, I thought I, I really wanted a red car, but I let that go real quick. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. So here's what we went through in looking at cars. So we ultimately ended up viewing in person five cars from private parties and one car at a dealership. This is a hassle with a child. <laughs> so we ended up taking our daughter to every single appointment to see these cars. And I tried to group them together so that we were seeing um, more than one on a trip. So the first weekend, I had three cars lined up for us. And I wanted to stay, basically, we were thinking Toyota Camry because they have the lowest, in my experience, the lowest repair cost. I'm familiar with that car. I've owned two Toyota Camrys back to back. I had a 1998 Camry with 180,000 miles. And then I had a 1990, uh, 2004 Camry with 160,000 miles. I drove the 2004 Camry for five years straight um, up to 210,000 miles. And I worked out a cost to own, even with repairs. And I would have on average one to two repairs, major repairs a year, even with those repairs. And those are inconvenient, I grant, because you're out of a car and you don't know what's going to happen. Even with that repair, it cost me about $120 per month um, with the cost of those repairs factored in. So I knew the Camry, I knew the repair schedule, and I know kind of what, what you can estimate to go. Like the front, the control arm is probably going to go out after 10 years. You see the ball joints get a little bit rusty after a couple of years. So those are things that I know need to be replaced that I can kind of plan for. So we were looking at Toyota Camrys. The first weekend, we saw three cars all together. I took us down to um, to New Jersey. And we, so I, I looked at a RAV4 because I just wanted to see what, what the market was. We looked at a 2011 RAV4 and it felt a little bit on the older side. It was also an auction done, not a salvage title, but it was bought at auction. So with a car, we insisted on Carfax from all the cars that we pulled and with a Carfax, so what Carfax is a history of, um, it's like the, like the car's birth certificate, but you can see all the um, the repairs and the maintenance that has been done if the shop reports to Carfax. Dealerships report to Carfaxes and some um, auto, like lube, auto oil change places report to Carfax. Some mechanics report to Carfax. So it's great to keep your service records, but likely that maintenance will already be reported to Carfax. So we saw three cars the first week, um, a CRV or excuse me, a RAV4 with 146,000 miles, a, a Camry or a Corolla with 84,000 miles, and then a Camry with 84,000 miles. And of the three, I like the Camry better because the Corolla is a little bit too small for us. That's why we settled on the Camry. The Camry was gorgeous. And they were asking 12.4, which was about $1,000 above Blue Book value. And I'm like, let's see if we can get it down to Blue Book value. We kind of went back and forth. The seller and I sounded like a, a wonderful family, one um, one owner. And we had settled on a price and I was like, okay, can we pick it up on this date? It was a Tuesday. I said, can we come down on Friday? And, you know, we, we settled and they're like, sure, well, you know, we'll see you then. And we were going to meet them at the DMV so that we could do all the titling right there. I get a call back from the seller quickly after, you know, immediately after we'd done this, it was in the evening. And she said, someone else is offering us a lot more money for the car. And I was like, instantly, I'm like, like I, my radar went off and I'm like, I thought that they were trying to get a lower, a higher price from us to get more money from us. And I was like, okay, well, if someone else is offering you more money, then you should take it. And they were like, oh, okay, thanks for understanding. And that was it. <laughs> And that was it. They never called back. It's like, oh man, it was kind of like, like a bluff. I kind of, and in, 
I, I called their bluff and they were not bluffing. So in hindsight, I wish that I had kind of asked for a little bit more detail. But at the time I thought that like I was, and it was in the middle of bedtime and bath time and I'm trying to get my child a bath and get my child to bed. So in hindsight, I wish that I'd asked for more information, but I didn't. <laughs> and so we lost that sale. <laughs> so it would have been a red Toyota Camry with a moonroof and $84,000, thousand miles on it, 2013 or 2012. And I was like, oh, bummer. So it was back to square one after that. So you live, you learn. I came back to it and I'm like, oh, okay. All right. So I just dumped right back into it and started looking at cars and reaching out. And this is what I've learned is don't get too excited at the first sort of first sale, like the first hint of a car that you'd like. Don't get excited. Keep your expectations in check. I also had kind of a checklist of everything that I was looking for that we wanted the mileage to be low, that we wanted a clean car fax, that we wanted minimal damage. And that car had also been in a moderate accident. So there was that as well. Um, and the sunroof, which is a non-negotiable for us. So we started looking again and then went out. So this is all around, um, we were going down to see, to help. Uh, my father-in-law was having um, a medical procedure. So we were going to be in Delaware for a couple days. We looked at another car. We stopped at a dealership to take a look at another car, like literally just look, not test drive just to see what it was like. Um, and my husband didn't say anything. So I kind of took that as let's continue on this moderate used car. So we saw two more cars and the last car that we ended up seeing obviously was uh, what we ended up going with. This was a, so what we ended up doing was a Toyota Camry 2013 with 65,000 miles on it. One owner in Long Island that we went to Long Island to pick up. So that's what we ended up getting. And I am satisfied with the price we paid. We paid just under Blue Book Private Party, which was decent. It was about 2,000 more than we would have paid for the previous Camry that had been in the accident, but was so beautifully from the red Camry kept up, um, which I still am like, oh, not regrets, but if I had it to do over, I would have asked for more information, asked what they were being offered. But again, can't complain. I think that they just gave it to a dealership and just handed the keys over and got a check and were on their way. So that's um, that's what it is. So we are now the proud owners of a 2013 Camry uh, with 65,000 miles on it, which, good Lord willing, <laughs> and I fully expect, I fully anticipate that that car will serve us very well. It does, and with a moonroof. So that's what we got. That's the story of the car. That's what I'm driving now, and that's that's where it's at. So let me know if you have any questions about buying a car used. If anything, I would just say that. I'm leaving this as a message to empower you to, if you're in the hunt for a car, to take that extra step to buy, um, to buy used. I am very satisfied with our position in not having a car note. <laughs> very happy with that um, and the car that we got in exchange. So thanks for watching and hope you'll keep watching. Bye.